to do my screen so I can see you all. Um, yeah, thank you for all coming. Um, so to the mindset for growth resilience in the workplace, um, we are very, very lucky actually to um, have this delivered. Um, now it's it's going to be, um, we're going to be speak, hearing from uh, Anne-Marie. Uh, Anne-Marie is, yeah, do you want to say hello? Say hello to everyone, Anne-Marie. Morning, everyone. <laughs> morning um and we've also got louise so louise would you like to say hello to everybody morning everyone uh, louise is the grad force project manager um and louise will introduce herself a bit later about uh, exactly what it is uh you know they do as a as a, a role uh, and then we have katie so katie would you like to introduce yourself hi everybody i'm katie brilliant thank you so, um, yeah, this is going to be a really good workshop. Um, a lot about, uh, you know, whether or not we're in growth or survival mode. Um, so I'm hoping that we will all learn something from this, uh, you know, webinar. Um, and we can all take away pieces and, um, and perhaps there might be opportunities for you to be able to take away into your business uh, or use this uh, as an opportunity for some training uh, or development within your workplace. So yes, Molly, can we change the slide, please? So yeah, I am. I'll just introduce myself. I work for the Kenton Victor Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I represent uh, membership. Um, so the Kenton Victor Chamber of Commerce is a non-profit organisation, and we really are here to support you in business uh, and to ensure that we are delivering um, information and services to uh, businesses so that we can grow and develop. So uh, yeah, a bit of housekeeping. Um, so yeah, please do keep your cameras on. Um, more than anything, this is about these um, webinars provide an opportunity for us to develop relationships, which is really important within business, whether or not that's in education, whether or not that's, you know, within your company, um, it's a really good opportunity for us all to get to know each other a bit better uh, and, and, you know, produce but have good contacts. Um, please keep your microphones on mute um, and use the chat function for questions. So yeah, the chat function is located at the bottom uh, in a talk bubble. Um, and if you click on that, please do write any questions you have throughout, um, throughout this webinar and I will do my best to pop them forward for you. So, um, we are going to go over to Anne-Marie, is that correct, Molly, Anne-Marie? Louise. Uh, Louise. Louise, sorry, we're going over to Louise first. So yeah, we've all got the pleasure of, of Louise speaking now, so over to you, Louise. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a pleasure or not, really. Um, <laughs> Just have a few introductory slides, I think, as well. But um, my name's Louise Gotch. I'm the uh, project manager for uh, Gradforce, um, which is based at Canterbury uh, Christchurch University. Um, and summary, we are developing a new model, which is around developing students from underrepresented groups to ensure that they're ready for the workplace, but also working with um, SMEs and employers in Kent and Medway um in it along the same way it's funded by the office for students for to keep local graduates from underrepresented groups to progress into the graduate employment with an amazing um graduate training program called get hired and our employer program is called get ahead <laughs> and so we want to work with employers to enable you and support you through this pandemic and beyond but we also offer a bespoke recruitment service. So we will match make. We will actually find the students that match the, your employment needs, unlike um, most other recruitment agencies. We know who our students are. We know what their skills are. And we work closely with you to understand what your skills are as well. And the aim is, is to match that up so that we put forward the right students for the roles that you have available. It's a new model. Um, we're trying it and hopefully you will all come on board and, and work with us to try this model so that we can make this work for yourselves and keep our local graduates local um, as well and working in Kent. <laughs> 
and Medway. So today's session is going to be hosted by Anne-Marie um, from Mindset Practice. Mindset Practice are also working with our students um, and working on similar things that Anne-Marie will be talking to you and, and dealing with today. It's, and it's been very important. We did it last year with our graduates and we got amazing feedback on how it helped them progress in their own self, really. So that's us. If you want to know any more information from us, follow us on LinkedIn. We post everything on LinkedIn, um, but you can email us at gradforce at canterbury.ac.uk and we'll arrange a follow-up meeting with you to tell you more and I think there's also a recording on the chamber Molly is that correct um, which is also an introduction to grad force it gives you more information and saves me droning on telling you what we're all about so welcome today I think you'll enjoy it and I look forward to meeting you all at some point after Thank you very much, Louise. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this, actually. Um, OK, so um, are we over? Who are we over to now, uh, Molly? Is it Anne? Are we going over to Anne-Marie? Yeah, so Anne-Marie, um, thank you. And yes, we're looking forward to this. I, I personally am, so crack on. <laughs> OK, thank you very much indeed. So I'm just um, making sure you can all hear me. Um, there's a lot going on in the screen. So we've got slides, we've got people, we've got um, chat box. So my intention this morning is to introduce you to some materials uh, that we use um, to help with well-being, mindset, um, our resilience, our performance ultimately in life and in work. Um, so bear with me in the sense that there's a lot of driving going on. Um, I can't actually see you all because I've only got one screen, um, but my intention is to share as much as I can that will hopefully have um, powerful meaning for you guys and then also for other people that you need to influence, whether that's clients, contractors, employees, uh, even family members. Um, so um, I'm going to try and keep my mind on the um, chat box as well. But basically, there's going to be quite a bit of sharing of material. There's going to be some videos to watch. Um, uh, and, and throughout, I'll ask some quite reflective questions for you to maybe make some notes or pop some things in the chat. So there will be some interaction. All right. So let's get started. I'm gonna... uh, so just to let you know, I work with this material all the time and we work with lots of different um, people. Uh, this is who we are. We are Mindset Practice. We're a people team and organisational development business. Um, and it's a very humanistic approach. It's about enabling people, their well-being, um, and ultimately their life and business performance results. You can see some of the people we uh, work with and support down there. Um, and basically, this is what our work is about. So we are focused, if you like, our mission is about empowering people to have um, show up in their more authentic self and their best self in work and life every day. Um, my truth about this is most of us want to be happy. Most of us are searching for fulfillment and satisfaction in life. And, you know, our work has the intention of helping people to get more of that every day uh, and in every interaction, either with ourselves or with others. So, that's setting the scene. Uh, you've got your first introduction there to um, our materials. Uh, fundamentally, we talk a lot about survival and growth mindset and which one am I in at any moment in time? And then how do I manage myself in order to influence myself and others to spend more time in the growth zone? And that will become clear as we go through the session this morning. So um, here we have the objectives for today. So especially during the current crisis, which I think for all of us is going on a lot longer than we ever realized it would, how we show up with ourselves and each other is becoming more and more relevant. Um, and how we show up now 
is not only we've all started to use the phrase you know the new normal but it's also about how that new normal is shaped uh, and what it will be because how we interact with each other and with ourselves will start to shape how the new norm will look and feel for for us um, this webinar will introduce you to a number of things so we're going to enable share some material about enabling your well-being around the mindset of growth and show you some information about understanding survival and growth which is really really powerful material we are going to provide you with a mindset of growth toolkit so you'll go away some with some materials that you can use straight away in the moment from now on so that's you know that's a really powerful takeaway that you will have this morning um, and we're going to show you how if you choose to you can access the mindset for growth online virtual program um, i believe solly somebody molly or someone can give me the nod they, they're going to get the pdf of the slides aren't they yeah so all the slides there's a lot of powerful material in here you won't get the videos but you will get the pdf of the materials that i'm going to share so um so that that's a takeaway from today all right so let's get started so how we respond to change is really really powerful in terms of the impact that it has on us and the environment around us so um we are constantly um having an impact. We are constantly influencing. So how we show up impacts both ourselves and everyone else around us. Um, but change is an event and actually how we respond to that change is the transition that we go through. So, you know, we're not far off being almost a full year in a predominantly lockdown situation, which has been quite challenging for a lot of people. Um, it's made us pause, it's made us think, it's had, I believe, both positive and negative impacts on us because a lot of people are starting to consider how they live their lives and, and it's caused, caused us to pause and consider, well, what do I do and how do I want to operate? As well as have to learn to deal with some pretty um, survival, real life survival issues. So it's had a massive impact on us. And I know I'm teaching us all what we already know, but I'm labeling it in the context of what we're gonna look at. So here, um, you may have come across, I'm sorry, you know, I don't know your background, so excuse me if I state the obvious, but you may have come across the change curve, which has been around for quite a while, which is an explanation of how we respond to change. And what we've done is we've layered on top of that our materials. So you'll see that there is an event happens. So first of all, uh, you know, we're using the COVID event. So there's surprise, there's curiosity. You know, I remember this time last year, wondering what was going to happen. Um, did not expect, you know, the impact that it did have, but was starting to notice all the news, you know, and, and was starting to move into this area. Typically for people, we get the impact and then we drop deeper into the survival, which is where, you know, the emotions, the feelings are probably around scared, anxious, powerless. You know, we had a lot of scaredness going on and we still have today all the talk of different strains and that has having a really massive impact on our well-being and then how we show up. So you can see some of the emotions that people may have felt and are feeling. Um, we then, in terms of a typical transition, we will then move into some phase of adaptability. So again, as I'm talking through this, I'm sure we can all relate to how we've adapted to things. You know, we've all adapted to having meetings like this online, even though we probably did a few of them depending on our work. But now this is our new norm. We spend our life talking to people through the internet. And we've all adapted to that. You know, organizations have set up everybody to be able to operate like this. That's real adaptability, you know. Um, and we are, as people, as a human race, we are very, very adaptable. And you'll see some of the emotions that people typically experience in this area. 
And then generally what happens is we, we, we accept the new norm. We go, oh, okay, this is how things are today. So we start to feel maybe a bit more optimistic and you'll see we've labeled this the growth phase. Um, so we find a new resilience, we find a new determination. We feel a bit more empowered. Um, you know, I'm still learning all the interaction of all the different platforms that people want me to operate off. Um, but, you know, my confidence is growing. I'm used to being like you, probably face to face with people. And this is all new. And we're adapting and we're becoming more. Uh, it's becoming our, our norm and more comfortable. And we're developing new habits and new skills and new levels of confidence. So that's the general of it. Now, it isn't a straightforward curve. We oscillate in and out all the time. So depending on maybe what's going on around us, what the news is saying, what's happening in our local environment, um, what's happening with people in our family, people in our workforce, what our, what our um, team members are going through, we're gonna move through these, yeah. Now I class myself as a really adaptable person. I actually love change. I love starting new projects. I love creating new exciting materials. I love working with new clients. So generally I'd say I'm very, very adaptable. Um, when this all started, I did go into the um, initial shock stage when you know all the announcements last March about we're going to lock down and this is what we're going to do. I think I was more shocked than I had expected to be. I was a bit in denial at the beginning of this time last year. I was a bit in denial thinking, you know, we'd find our way through. Um, I didn't spend much time here um, just because I'm practiced at not spending as much time there. Uh, and then into here and then new norm and you know I have a family there's five of us so adapting for them however in the last few weeks and months I've spent more time here than I did last year because my hope was you know we were finding a way through but actually going into another lockdown my children not being able to see their friends um, my clients being very concerned about their families and their welfares and their businesses and the success of their business or having to furlough people. I found myself more here, I guess, because of the relentlessness of it, the fact that we're still dealing with it. Um, I'm coming out, I'm, I'm moving back over here. But I have to say this time round, I kind of spent more time there than I did the first time. So that's just my sort of version. And I guess I would just ask you to reflect while, this, while you're looking at the screen and you will get this, this slide in your pack to think about, you know, maybe what was your journey last year or over the last few months? You know, what was your journey as we had the changed announcements going into Christmas? What did you experience from your employees or your colleagues or your customers um, as everything became very changeable around the Christmas time? We're doing this, no, we're not doing this. We're changing plans and then changing plans after Christmas. So a lot of that uncertainty making us maybe oscillate through this much more than, than maybe we did last time. So rhetorical question at this stage, um, obviously share in the chat uh, if you want to. Okay, so something to think about. And you'll see over here, it isn't the changes that do you in, it's the transitions. So all those transitions, we've had a lot of them in the last few weeks, you know, in, in probably the last eight to 12 weeks and there's potentially a lot more to come. So part of emotional intelligence is about knowing where I am and having that self-awareness. So let's, you know, let's not dwell on that. We pretty much know where we are. Um, so what personal qualities and attributes do you believe you need to thrive and grow today? 
So I'm going to stop talking for a moment and I'm going to ask you just to spend a moment thinking about that and start to maybe pop a few ideas in the, in the chat room. So what personal qualities and attributes do you think you might need to thrive today? Thank you, Molly. We've got a determination, a confidence, connection, agility, resilience, curiosity. Yeah, positivity, resilience, motivation. Great, great. Lovely, strength, yeah. Resilience, problem solving flexibility, adaptability. Fantastic. Okay, so let me start linking this for you because there are some fantastic um, res responses in there. Now all of those take energy. They all take us to be in that adaptability or that growth space to be able to be fueling our mind and body ready to deal with whatever is, is coming our way. Um, and in times of, of crisis and in times of survival, um, we can try to keep going. And this is about actually taking that pause and noticing what do I really, really need right now rather than staying on that hamster wheel. So let me explain how it works. So you may or may not have come across this before, uh, but basically uh, vertical development typically is around how we think and how we show up um, and how we adapt and are flexible. Whereas horizontal development is about the continuation maybe of my professional development or my technical development, uh, the skills, the knowledge that I need to do my job rather than, so the what versus the how. And what often happens, well, what is happening, especially in this pandemic, is that actually the how becomes really important because the how is where the adaptability comes from. The how is how we uh, learn to be more self-managed, more influencing of ourselves and more influencing of others. So being able to have um, the appropriate mindset, and I use that word intentionally because it's whatever is right for you in that moment of time so it's that really present what do I need right now what do I need my people around me um, my cohort whoever that might be so mindset matters your mindset and your practice of emotional intelligence be it growth or survival matters the reality is that we are going to go into growth or survival at any moment in time. It's really binary. Um, so let me just play a very short video for you from Mindset Practice. This is one of our core videos that we use and let the, let the video explain growth and survival to you. Here we go. Molly, I think we might just need that a uh, bit louder if we possibly can. Ourselves as others foreclose. Unless we choose otherwise, our survival patterns take control. We become reactive and defensive. We ignore or miss actions to achieve the best outcome in favour of those that help us to feel okay again quickly. Sometimes our survival pattern is driven by a belief that I'm okay and others are not. When in a meeting, we may find ourselves being overly critical, judgmental. We insist on having the last word, talk over others, blame others, resist feedback, and believe there is only one truth, ours. At other times, we may find our survival pattern is driven by a belief that others are more okay than we feel ourselves. We become exhausted, constantly trying to please others. We become guarded or hidden habitually avoid conflict and avoid saying what is really true for us. We find it difficult to see the choices we do have, feel disempowered. We prefer to stay in our own comfort zone. When our mindset is switched to growth, we feel okay with ourselves. 
and okay with others. We feel more present, mindful, and balanced. Rather than reacting defensively to criticism, we choose to pause, listen, and explore. Since we feel okay, we choose to act with compassion towards ourselves, see mistakes as learning, and extend that compassion towards others. We experience emotion mindfully. We can feel angry, but when in growth, we can use that anger as a signal to ourselves and others that things need to change. We look for solutions rather than blame. We choose to be assertive rather than hide the elephant in the room. We share our own truth and seek to explore the truth of others. Our mindset practice of emotional intelligence is the process we use to manage and integrate our mindset, feelings and behaviour to be our best self. We do this through our practices for growth. Being curious about our mindset and intention, am I in survival or growth? Being present and aware of the feelings and emotions of ourselves and others. Being choiceful and accountable about the actions we take for ourselves and with others. Our mindset is the key jigsaw piece in our practice of EI. When our mindset is switched to survival, we don't feel okay. Our puzzle pieces become misshapen and disconnected. We lose our ability to be present with our emotions which in turn leads to defensive reaction and behaviour. Conversely, when our mindset is switched to growth, we feel okay. Our puzzle pieces are aligned and connected, our impact positive. We feel present with our emotions and use that understanding to inform mindful action. Understanding our puzzle pieces can help us identify which habits support our performance from growth or tip us into survival. We can all choose to develop new habits and show up from growth more consistently. What do you choose? So, clearer understanding there of growth and survival mindsets and the fact that we're always in one of them yeah it's really binary we're either in growth or we're in survival um, however we can take control so there's a question at the bottom of the screen there so let's just pause for a moment and take a little reflection of what growth or survival ex examples have you seen or experienced in maybe the last few weeks or months so either for yourself how you've experienced or for those other people around you that you've observed so again let's maybe just have a little share in the uh, in the chat box Yeah, stayed in comfort zone. Thanks, Molly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Real openness, guys, lovely, lovely to see. Um, how we show up has a direct impact on, um, you can see I'm very warm where I am, uh, has a direct impact on ourselves and everyone around us. So thank you very, very much for the openness. Um, you know, today's a real opportunity to get really present. So we are practicing right now emotional intelligence with all the questions that we're sharing with you. Um, so noticing where I am, you know, you saw this framework in the video, um, and this is our core framework, and I'm going to introduce you to this and to the practices which are here. 
um, so that you can start to practice it and use it immediately with yourself and others. So knowing where I am, and you know, you can see that the, the pieces flow when it's all in growth, when we are very aware, when we're really present with ourselves and we're really present with others and, and we're sort of conscious and mindful would be some of the other words you would have heard around of how um, people are experiencing ourselves, me, themselves, what's going on. However, when something is off and we're in survival and we're not in balance then um the impact it can have is very different and it can feel very different so so we're already starting to notice that we're spending a lot of time talking about our feelings and our emotions because that's the data that's what our mind and body are telling us you know if i think something i will feel a certain way so here for example you know if my self-belief is low and i think i can't do this then that's going to have an emotional impact on me and my body is going to start to feel a certain way and that's the data so my thoughts affect my feelings and my feelings affect my thinking um, and so being able to pause long enough, and we're talking seconds, to notice where I am is that first step of practicing emotional intelligence. So if I'm being really present with myself and I'm really being really present with others, then I can start to notice maybe where mine or their mindset is. And I can therefore make some different choices in the moment of how I show up and how I work and respond with them. So it's a really fluid, it's a really in the moment. Um, and in order to practice this, we really do have to slow down um, and just notice. And it is about practice. Um, and, and I guess my truth here would also to be, you know, it's never done. We're always having to practice because we change and the world around us constantly changes. So here in a little bit more detail are our practices. Now you see I've presented them in a slightly different way here. So the three practices are very fluid and they work in with each other all of the time. So let me take an example. Um, Charlotte from Canterbury, you said, I feel I have felt overwhelmed and reactive. So, you know, over here in survival, so I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, survival is reactive. So whenever we feel that we are reacting to something, we are definitely in the survival um, mindset. So pausing, what can I be curious about? What is my mindset? As I notice the feeling of overwhelm, what is my mindset right now? What is my intention when we're in survival? Our intention is to protect ourselves, is to stay safe, is to, someone said, stay in my comfort zone. Um, I could get curious about that. I could get curious about um, what would it feel like if I went into growth. I can get curious about how I'm feeling and where I feel the emotions and maybe uh, do I feel it in my stomach? Am I feeling tension in my body? Where do I feel those emotions? Um, and what choices do I have? You know, I hear um, a pattern with a number of my clients at the moment of I'm always in meetings. I'm always in back to back meetings um, and meetings are coming in over lunch times, and meetings are coming in earlier and later in the day. Um, and people are feeling very in survival, very reactive and feeling maybe that they can't say no to a meeting. Um, and, you know, in this climate that we're in of being uh, behind the screen, then if we were in the offices, then, you know, we'd be getting up and walking around for cups of coffee. We'd be chatting to people. 
You know, I can go make a cup of coffee in my house in two seconds. But if I was in an office, I'd probably take a bit longer because I'd bump into two or three people at the coffee zone and have a little chat or I might have to walk downstairs to a, a general coffee area and that would take a bit longer. So we're exercising, we're stretching, we're moving our body when we get up and walk around then it shifts the energy in our body. So my state might change, which is how I'm feeling. Yeah, making sense. So let's keep going. So again, you may or may not have seen this. This, this model is informed by the OK Corral, as you may have seen it, and that's OK if you haven't. So. We have done some research and the research I'm going to share with you is pre-COVID. Um, I've also seen some other research that aligns with ours, which was on a more global scale. Um, basically, we're always in one of these houses, one of these rooms, I should maybe say. So if I'm in the growth space, then I'm sort of seeing my, the world through the I'm OK, you're OK. So that might be, I can accept you as you are. Um, I recognize that you are in survival and feeling not okay, but I'm not judging you about it. I'm accepting you. So that's, I'm okay, you're okay. I've got a 17 and a half year old daughter in the house um, who pretty much isn't gonna do her A-levels, you know, that she's worked really hard for and is juggling um, what to do about university acceptances. So, you know, she is often in this box. She's often in the critic box, you know, um, but I can accept her being in the critic box. So that puts me here. I get it. I get that that's a really tough place to be. Yeah. So let me explain them. So dependent is uh, you're okay, but I'm not okay. So here, we often want other people's opinions to tell us that things are okay. We look outside for confirmation and clarity on things. We maybe put everybody else before ourselves, you know, guilty as charged for a lot of, of my early adult years. Um, the positive here is we might have really loyal, hardworking people in the team or the family because they're always putting everybody else before them, themselves or they run a it's got to be perfect it's got to be really really amazing so i'll i'll work an extra couple of hours evening to really perfect you know the, the the spell check or the grammatical check or whatever the piece of work is that they're doing so this box can provide an organization um, or we can have people in this box that are really fantastic loyal employees um, but what's their well-being like? What's their resilience like? How um, are we helping them to self-regulate? Uh, I the last team I managed, I had a, a a wonderful young lady in my team, and she's gone on to great things. But she would work really, really long hours, and it took a long time for her to start to understand the impact that was having on her because there were times where she didn't show up in, in the best space. Um, if I'm in critic, then I value my opinion over others. So uh, this can be a confidence boost. Quite often people who are operating in here, um, the home really is here. So seeks to dominate, seeks to speak over people, um, is quite aggressive or competitive, uh, is, is, is wearing maybe some armor to protect themselves. So I'll be strong, I'll stay strong. And again, guilty as charged, have lived, you know, um, in, in that box, um, not wanting to say that I didn't know how to do something, not wanting to admit that I didn't really have the time to do that, didn't want to say no. So I would say, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I can do that. that. Um, and, you know, at, at times would therefore maybe present some shoddy work or just end up being exhausted trying to stay up and and do everything and here in the stuff box I'm in the um I'm critical of myself and others so I can't really see a way out and I become quite rigid uh, unpredictable because it's a bit flighty it's a bit sort of flitting around trying 
trying to find resolutions, but not really growing to find the solutions. There's a wonderful quote, you've possibly heard it, but yeah, I'm gonna use it anyway, is the quote from Einstein, which is, you know, um, paraphrased a number of times. So I probably won't get the original quote right, but it's something along the lines of, you know, sign of insanity, trying to do this, get, get a different result by doing the same thing over and over again. And that is a real paraphrase. Um, but I'm sure you've all heard a version of that quote. So in the growth box, this is where I'm practicing my practices. So I'm being curious, I'm being open. I'm able to um, self-regulate me and self regulate others. I might be seeking to understand what's going on for somebody. I might be, be noticing some slightly different behaviors and getting curious about them. I might be pausing and staying in a conversation just to say, so how are you doing? Um, and I'm doing that more consciously and I'm staying with the how are you doing rather than maybe sometimes we do this, oh, how are you? Good, good, right, yeah, and we get to the task. Yeah, and we're probably all guilty of doing that at times. So here are the statistics uh, that I wanted to share with you. So you'll see here that um, our research is showing us that roughly 62.6% .6 of people, professionals, are in survival. That was pre-pandemic. That was pre-pandemic. So what happened last year? Yeah. Now, if you reflect back on these boxes here, you know people and ourselves included, because we all go through all of those, where, you know, we show up in places and we go, yeah, but that's a defensive, you know, yeah, but I couldn't because, you know, we use the, um, uh, let's say, excuses or justifications for where we are. Uh, we don't come, you know, we use a phrase in corporate and business around uh, what's bring me the solution, not the problem. You know, well, the, the solution mind is here, but a lot of people are here. Yeah. And we all do it. That's the thing. It's human nature. You know, we get in our own way and we know that we do. So here's just the rest of those statistics. So just let's just pause for a moment and think about that. If we have got 62% of people operating out of survival, then where did they go last year? You know, and the impact of that on how I keep going in this restricted living uh, situation, how I keep going when maybe through technology and I'm not managing it, you know, work never shuts off, there's alerts, or, you know, there's the daily update on the news and it's telling me that, oh my goodness, you know, there's more and more strains coming and, and they're different. And, you know, um, some places are getting the, the, the vaccines out quickly and some aren't, you know, um, my stepmother, my mother-in-law, my, my own, you know, family haven't had the date, my elderly relatives haven't had the date yet for their vaccination, all of this going on. How do I pay my bills? Because I've been furloughed again. So it's quite, you know, it's quite, it's quite scary. And then people are thinking about, you know, the longevity of their careers, or they might be starting their careers, or they might have just started a business. So let's move on. So um, a lot of this work around the growth mindset comes from an amazing um, professor, Dr. Carol Dweck. So this piece of information is informed by her work. Um, I'm going to get this wrong, but she was either Harvard or Stanford. I can't remember. Um, one of my flaws is I read stuff and understand it, and then I don't necessarily hold on to all the detail. Um, so uh, she did some significant work around um, uh, the growth mindset. And you can find her on YouTube and there's books from her. Um, and it links with our self-belief and belief in others. So where is my mindset? Um, and am I in a stuck mindset or am I in a growth mindset? So you'll, he you'll see here, I'm not okay, stuck, dependent, I'm in survival, critic. Um, and you'll see some, some statistics there. So results, 
um, a growth mindset results in significantly higher levels of agility. When I am in a growth mindset, I can be more flexible. I can go into that earlier graph of more adaptability. I can find more options and choices and flexibility of what I can do. I'm in that there are possibilities, there are options mindset. That's a growth mindset in action. Some other key research um, around how growth impacts resilience and well-being, and this comes from the Edinburgh well-being scale, is that if I am more, we're never going to be always in a, in a growth mindset. We're not supposed to be. That's that's not what we're talking about. But if I can be more in a mindset of growth, then this significantly impacts my ability of resilience and my well being. So if I am in more of a growth mindset and therefore I recognize I have choices, going back to some of my clients, then I recognize I can choose to show up to a meeting or not. And I can choose to fit in a 10 minute walk or a 20 minute walk. Or I can choose that we recently ran a mindset for leadership program um, a few weeks ago, all online. And one of the people on there, a young lady about 35, has one of her growth habits that she's doing is she's doing 100 squats a day, you know, which is a new quick habit. It takes her 20 minutes. And we've got, she's got 20 minutes in the day. but she was in survival around her well-being and her physical, um, you know, exercise because of all the things that she was telling herself she couldn't do. So it's that, well, what are my choices? What could I do? You know, can I make my uh, well-being lunch in the morning so that it's ready for me to go and enjoy and I'm not having to actually go into task mode? Can I um, prepare some emails the night before, but put them in my outbox so that in the morning I can just send them, but I've done it mindfully and I've done it from a growth mindset. Um, while I was calm, maybe with a glass of wine in my hand and I wasn't on a screen and I didn't have lots of emails chucking in. These are all choices that a growth mindset might make. Yeah. So let's have a look. Here we go. So being curious about my mindset and intention. Am I noticing, so going into that mindset of curiosity, when am I defensive? How have I been defensive? Have I judged myself or others? Am I quite critical of myself, telling myself things aren't good enough or I should be able to do more? Am I being overwhelmed and reactive? Am I guarded and hidden? Yeah. Or can I be curious about my mindset of growth and whether I am growth focused, I'm curious, I'm adaptable, whether I'm exploring my emotions and how I feel, how compassionate am I being with myself? Am I giving myself a break? You know, quite literally, um, my Give us a break. Am I saying it's okay? We're, do, you know, we're doing the best we can. Am I sharing what's true for me? Am I trying to show up in a place that I'm looking really resilient and being strong? And then the impact that that has on the people around me who maybe think they have to be like me because we copy. That's how we learn. We follow what other people are doing. Yeah. So am I choosing those influences that I let into my mindset. Which links to the organizational climate that I create around me. And organizational could be, you know, if you're a small organization, it's just those few people that you have around you, whether they're clients, suppliers, employees, um, and um, uh, people who are, uh, colleagues, I guess, peers is the word I'm actually looking for. Or if I'm in a bigger organization, you know, how I show up. So if I show up being really strong and really in control of everything, then what impact is that having on others? 
you know, what are others thinking I am expecting of them? Or am I showing up more growth, more uh, creative about how we do things? Am I collaborating? Am I being open and honest and saying, yeah, I'm struggling too. And, you know, maybe we have to be mindful about how we try and do things together. How can we work together? How can we build win-win relationships? So then we start to get this culture, this climate around us. And um, this can be our family. This can be our neighborhood. This can be our organization. Um, so all of those are um, groups that we are a part of and wherever we are, we have an impact. Um, uh, there's a lady I work with who does this work and she has a lovely soft Irish Dublin accent. And she, I can't, I'm not even gonna try to do it, but she says this phrase really beautifully, which is, you know, are you the kind of person who lights up the room when you walk in? or when you walk out. So just pause to let that sink in. Okay, how are we doing? We all right? Yeah, okay, so managing our presentness and managing our state, let's just adjust our bodies, notice how we're feeling, if you need to stretch it out a little bit, because there's still more to come. Okay. So being present with our feelings and our emotions and helping us to explore in our body are sending us signals at the time. So noticing where I feel it, you know, noticing how if I move my body, actually it has an impact on how I feel and noticing when I go into calls or when I go into uh, visual calls or telephone calls or interactions with people, um, you know, do I get that clench? Do I get that reaction? What's happening for me? And so being really present with our body and ourselves and how we're, what we're noticing in our body helps us. So let me introduce you to the feelings gauge. Um, so this is a tool that we use a lot in our coaching and our development. And again, you will have it. This is part of your toolkit that you're getting. Um, we are very, very good at generalizing. So if we were, um, if we were walking into a, a room to do this, um, this, this workshop, we might be greeting each other and going, hey, how are you? I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm not bad. I'm all right. So you won't find any of those on this wheel because they're not emotions. Yeah. So we're often so busy and we're often on automatic pilot that we don't actually pause. And let's face it, most people don't actually want us to really say how we're feeling a lot of the time. But that's a really good example of how when we say to each other, you know, how are you? It's more of a here's my general greeting and now I'm moving on to task. But sometimes, especially at these times, really getting to know each other and ourselves, pausing and being present enough to go, how am I feeling right now? So I'm going to ask you to just notice on the wheel, how are you feeling right now? You know, you're listening to someone, lots of chat going on. I'm just checking the chat. So just notice which words resonate with you in this moment. Also, look at the words and think about maybe what have you been feeling over the last few days? Where have you been on that wheel? Have you been jumping around a bit? reflective, secure, tired. One of the beauties of the English language is that we have thousands of words to describe ourselves and they all come from somewhere. So really starting to be playful, I guess, and curious about which word resonates with me, you know? Am I feeling relaxed or, or is it more peaceful or, or, or is it reflective or 
and starting to really notice how each of those emotions feels in my body and where I feel them. Yeah. So that's a really powerful tool that you're going to get. Um, let me just uh, see if I can go back a minute. No, that's the wrong. Sorry, off my driving. So, so um, just notice before I move on that you've got on the left hand side is, is your survival. And you've got sort of higher energy up here and lower energy down here. And over here, you've got your higher energy growth emotions and you've got your lower energy uh, growth emotions. I would have said in the past that there was a pattern of behavior, a habit in organizations that we felt we had to operate up here. It's gotta be on it, gotta be on it, gotta be on it, high energy, high energy. And if we're always in high energy, we're going to drop into the survival because, you know, my kids use Xbox and they use rechargeable batteries. The answer's in the word. You've got to recharge them at night. You know, you've got to rest. Um, so you've got to go down here. But actually down here is imagination and dream state. And this is where we create. This is where we put it into act action and practice. Yeah. So spending some pause and present time to think about what's my intention for the rest of the day what's my mindset what do I intend for myself and my interactions with others okay I'm, I'm pausing and dropping lots of uh, reflective questions with you I'm aware of that so your minds will be processing and being choiceful um, this practice encourages us to Think about what is uh, possible, what is available. And it also encourages all of us to be more accountable for our behavior. So um, choosing to not change is a choice. E everything is a choice. We make decisions all the time. Um, and when we're in the growth mindset, we are aware that I've made a choice. And part of developing and growing our emotional intelligence and our awareness of how we're showing up is about building that awareness of, I have choice, I can choose, and I'm accountable and responsible for that. Yeah. However, as human beings, we have habits and some of those habits are really ingrained and we've been carrying them around for quite a long time. So sometimes changing a habit um, can take some time. And so that's where if, if, if we can spend more time in the growth, we can be kinder to ourselves and more compassionate. And we can set out with an intention to think about what I want more of and less of in my day-to-day -day, uh, interactions with people. Okay. So let's just let some of that sit and we'll just watch another video for a moment. Before I start to play the video, um, uh, yeah, Kelly's popped a question in the chat there about start to think about any questions you may have and that's absolutely correct. Thank you. Okay, let's have a look at this. Self-responsibility. You only you are responsible for who you are and what you do. Your habit of self-responsibility is concerned with the extent you believe this to be true. When our habit of self-responsibility tends towards survival, fear and anxiety may cloud our thinking and close down our options. We find it hard to take accountability for the choices we make and the stories we tell ourselves. We believe we don't have any choices or feel there is only one way. Thoughts such as, what's the point? It's not my fault, it's theirs. Nothing ever changes around here. It dominates our minds. We believe the good things that happen to us are just luck. We constantly miss opportunities to change our situation. We're in the habit of playing the blame game. The good news is we almost always have more choices than we think we do. When self-responsibility tends more towards growth, we're in the habit of seeing the full range of choices available to us. We may not like them all, but we accept and see the influence we have over who we are and what we do. 
we recognize not making a choice is also a choice if done from a position of awareness and accountability. Even when it feels there are no choices to be had, we find a way to influence the tiny amount we can, which in turn leads us to feel more resourceful, in control, and better placed to see the choices that were there all along. Okay. Let me just pause for a moment and um, ask you to think about the examples of responsibility that you have taken, let's say in the last 24 hours, of growth responsibility that you've taken in the last 24 hours. Let's start to get really present. What choices did I make? Starting to develop the habit of being really present, great exercise, exercise each day, yeah. Even down to the type of lunch that I feed myself, you know. When our, um, when our world potentially has shrunk quite a bit, then, you know, how do I be compassionate and kind to myself? How do I treat myself? How do I look after my myself yeah yeah down to even making the bed in the morning so that when you walk in the room it's it's neat and it's tidy you know down to maybe buying yourself a really nice mug or a cup or a special tea or or feeding yourself a healthier lunch or um, indulging in something for yourself um, uh, checking in with people dressing up yeah just for the hell of it absolutely you know, being choiceful, it's very easy. Um, I, I was um, having a bit of a laugh with my cousin who, my family are in Northumberland. And I happened to ring a cousin the other day just to see how she was doing. And she got dressed up to go to the supermarket on Sunday and said to her husband, you know, don't laugh at me. Because it's really easy for us to spend so much time in casual clothes these days, you know. So, you know, what am I reading? Am I feeding my mind? Have I picked up a new book or have I done other webinars like this to um, give me some invigoration and some new things to do? So thank you for your responses. Now um, I'm going to try and use the annotate here. So let me have a look. Uh, sorry guys, this is, um, oh, so I've done it and I shouldn't have done it, clear that. Okay, so let's come out of there for a minute. Um, oh, I'm really mucking this up, chaps. I'm so sorry. Let's come out of there. Let's get this slide built first. There we go. So you can see this slide building in front of you. Um, and we're gonna do a little bit of interaction here for a minute, which is around where do I think my habit of sense of responsibility tends towards? So noticing that we've got here some descriptors. In all of our materials, we break down the growth and survival uh, for each of the areas so that we can get really honed in on, you know, how does growth and survival right now apply to self-responsibility? So use the, the tick to indicate where your current habit of self-responsibility is. So if I get this right, oh, sorry, I'm not driving very well right now. If I go to annotate, then you should be able to put a mark on the screen somewhere along that line. Fantastic. Thanks, Molly. 
<laughs> for everyone else, if I can help at all, I believe along the top of your screens, there's view options and there's a drop down menu there and there's a button that says annotate. So if you click that, then everyone should be able to annotate on the line there, just like I've done. Thanks, Molly. Yeah, just make a squiggle. Great, thanks, guys. Super. Uh, hang on, I'm just trying to find my mouse. Oh, I've lost my mouse at the moment. Where is it? Okay, found mouse. All right. So um, let's have a look. So maybe we could have a little bit of feedback from one or two people around why they've put themselves where they have. So maybe we could hear just from anyone, if you wanna just pop a couple of words in um, why you've put your line where you are, what's, what's present for you. I, I, I go. Um, so I have put my, if you'd asked me last week, I'd have been down the bottom in survival. Um, I think the reality of going in, it really hit me last week that we were going into another, you know, lockdown. Yeah. Uh, and I was being asked to adapt again. Um, and yeah, it, I, I, I wasn't very well, actually. I got poorly. Um, and it was because I couldn't, I, I was just, it was the realisation of where I, what was going on, um, which gave me very bad anxiety actually but this week um i'm feeling back to growth you know like i know what's being asked of me um i can do it and yeah it's it's positive i feel positive yeah. so yeah what a difference a week makes <laughs> yeah thank you kelly i i was gonna say and sometimes it's what a difference a day or even an hour can make yeah because i i had a bit of a meltdown the other day um and that was just, you know, I'm, tr I'm trying to be super mom. And I know, I, you know, logically, I know much better than that. Uh, but five people, almost five adults in the house and, and trying to make sure everybody's got what they need, when and where, then, um, yeah. So anybody else want to share? I've got some comments here. Generally feeling but growth. This is from Andrew, but disempowered, but not actually being at work, like to be busy. Yeah. So that's that real present awareness of actually, what do I need? Where am I now? And, and what could I do with, you know, what are my choices? Um, who's this? Carrie. Uh, today, I'm too far the left, as it's been extremely challenging personally, but I myself into the growth area. Super. Well, I'm hoping that some of what we're talking about is going to help you. There's still more to come. Um, this is a really good exercise that you could do with yourself regularly. You know, you could check in with yourself if you're a very visual person, then just drawing that line out and going, you know, where am I? When you get the picture of the wheel, you could be looking at the wheel and going, what have I been feeling over the last few days or the last few hours? Um, and then thinking about, so what do I need to do? Um, so that I can get more into the, the growth area. Um, I'm going to link to something Kelly just said, because we're talking about growth and survival in that context of growth, well-being and results. And, uh, you know, the reality is that if we keep going and going and going in the survival zone, we will burn out. And that is when we get poorly. And I know a lot of us, have, uh, we're much, much more aware these days of the impact of mindset and effortfulness, you know, being really trying and efforting to make things happen and the impact that that has on our well-being. But more than ever today, um, 
looking after our internal state so that our well-being you know that stress creates toxicity in the body toxicity in the body puts stress on the body we're no longer in homeostasis uh, that can mean that we are uh, more likely or not more likely wrong word Anne-Marie potentially could be affecting our um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I've lost my word. Immune system. Yeah. So it can have a direct impact on our health. And I know we probably all know that. But emotional intelligence is really linked to um, how we are in terms of our well being and our resilience and our ability to look after ourselves. So practicing slowing down, practicing being choiceful, practicing being curious and using those three practices to make new choices, yeah, is a habit that we can all form and we can all practice. And, you know, it is no, it is no accident that we call them practices. So thanks for your really open um, shares on the screen here. Um, and I hope that we're creating some food for thought. I need to clear that, don't I? So let me just do that. Clear all drawings. Thank you for that. Um, and close that down. Right. So let's move on. Um, so I would like us to think about, um, sorry, I've probably gone. I would like us to think a little bit more about, I've probably spoken way faster than I needed to. Um, I'd like us to think a little bit about the three practices and how I can, um, which one would have the most impact on me at this moment in time. So could I ask you to just pause for a moment, think about those three practices. I'm going to go back if I can here, and show you this one. So have a look at those and spend a moment and just think about which of those three practices would have the biggest impact on you today. And then let's take it. Okay, so we've got Elspeth saying, be choiceful. Um, can we hear from Elspeth a moment? And just hear about how would be choiceful be useful for you today? Um, so it's just choosing the, um, the right way to do it. You know, you always come, you always get to a path um, on every, every choice. And it's, sometimes it's very easy to take the, the given path or the very easy path. And sometimes you actually have to stop and think and actually go, no, I'm not going to do the easy way. I actually going to make the choice. OK, it might be slightly different or more difficult, but it will be more beneficial. Um, it's like the, the silly things like uh, the comment I made earlier about making a bed. Um, it was what a decision that I decided to make probably two months before Christmas that every day I'd make the bed more difficult because of the fact that my husband works shifts so he's always out last but I always made sure I went in and made the bed and it made going to bed easier because he wasn't there so the, going to bed when he's not there I always found really difficult because I want to make sure he's home safely so I was getting really tired because I was waiting up for him yet right. still getting up while he stayed in bed so, so it's a little can I just ask you, um, how did it make you feel going to bed and walking into the room and there was a, a made bed? Uh, for a made bed, a little bit more peaceful. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's that's, yeah, that's a really good example of how. So, so um, first of all, thank you. Um, but you were, I guess, you, you, the word peaceful didn't fall out of your mouth the first time, but I could feel that there was an emotion around the fact that you walk into the room and the bed is made and it has significance yeah. for you. And so that's one of those practices around going, 
how am I feeling about something? Because as human beings, we regulate on feelings. We know if something feels good. And I started today talking about, you know, I believe we all want to just, you know, we're all in search of happiness and enjoying life and the busyness gets in the way. So that wheel is really powerful to have in front of you and be going, how am I feeling right now? Okay, I'm feeling, you know, tired. So what do I need? What choices have I got? How would I like to feel instead? So we're getting into really sort of self-managing and, and, and self-regulating um, by using our emotions as that gauge and that monitor to self-coach really. So thanks for sharing, Elspeth. What else did we have here? Um, we've got some be choicefuls. So that's really interesting. There's quite a bit of the choiceful coming up. Um, if we think back to um, the COVID model, the, the change care right at the beginning, quite often when we're in a crisis or we're in survival, we can feel that our choices have been reduced. Uh, if we're in that dependent box that you saw, then we can feel that our choices have been reduced. Yeah. So it's very, I'm very curious that be choiceful is the one that people are noticing because our world feels like it's done this. And so to actually open it back out and go, oh, maybe I have more choices than I think I had. Maybe there is more choice available to me um, is quite, and I'm going to pause this to you and ask you to pop in the box, in the chat box. What does that feel like? If we've been living with that, there's less choice and we suddenly go, maybe there's more choice than I thought. How does that make us feel? What emotions come up for you? Anybody else? We've got less pressured, less stressed, happier, reduces stress, creates empowerment. Yeah, more in control. All of those put us back on the growth side of that feelings wheel, of that feelings um, uh, gauge. Uh, all of those help us to access more of our um, open mindset. Yeah, right. Let me just, I just want to, um, I'm just going to come out of the slide deck as it is at the moment and just um, check where I'm up to on the slide deck. Um, who's that saying? Sorry, yeah. Bryn Price. Bryn, good luck. You'll get these slides in the pack. Thank you for coming. Um, so I, I just want to check where I'm up to on something. While I'm doing that, I'd ask you to think about, have you got any questions about the application of this in your business or your environment today? You know, my desire is that what we cover today has an impact on you and is of use to you. So I'm really happy to take two or three questions in a moment. I just want to check that I've covered all the resources that I need to check with you. So bear with me just a moment while you do that. Um, Okay, let's have a look. Mine can tell me if I just go, please do keep down with me. Yeah, that's great. Lovely. I'd love to have you all connect with me on LinkedIn. That's fabulous. Um, thank you for that, Kelly. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about this already in terms of, of the choiceful one. So let's have a little quick think about, have you got any questions about direct application right now um, and if you have, pop them in the box and we'll just cover a couple of key points for you before I get into the last few slides.
guessing that's a no. All right. So, um, so let me have a look. Oops. So here we are, just a, a summary. I don't know if someone was going to speak then. Um, we've got a summary of the practices here. So just noticing, be curious about my mindset and intention. So let me almost mentally rehearse these forward for you. Um, if you're like me, then you've got different hats on during the day. I'm a work from home mum at the moment. Um, so I'm looking after us all as well as, you know, running my business and working with mindset practice and various clients. So I have different things scheduled throughout my day and I might be wearing a different hat, you know, being mom, being, you know, the coach, um, um, being the client at times. So what's my intention when I go into each of those different segments of my day is one way to use be curious. You could use the wheel and look at that and go, what can I be curious about in this meeting? That might help me enter the meeting or enter the conversation with a curiosity mindset. Um, at our dinner table, it's about the only time we all get together in the day, but uh, when we're all around the dinner table at night, we do the be curious, you know? so. How was your day? What did you get up to? What was your best part of the day? What was the worst part of your day? You know, what are you going to do this evening? And I play that game with my children so that we can be really present with each other and we can engage in that time that we have together. So what's my mindset and intention as I go into the next piece of my day? Am I in survival? Am I in growth? Where would I like to be? How can I intend? that um, practicing being present then am I aware of my feelings as I go into the next piece of my day I and Marie have a very bad habit that I'm still trying to break which is I can very easily see everything as a to-do list and I can practice the habit of getting through the to-do list rather than enjoying each segment of that day so can I be really present in the next piece of the day? Can I be really present with the people and practice being present and being curious? Or can I be really present with myself, like mindfully and presently eating my lunch to renew and give this, you know, a rest? Um, walk away from the technology and give that a rest. What choices have I got in that moment? choosing, as people have said, what I eat for lunch, where I eat my lunch. I went outside for 10 minutes this morning uh, when I got up because the birds were singing. It wasn't, the sun hadn't come up yet, but it was so peaceful and quiet and we didn't have any rain today. So what choices have I got and how does that make me feel and how does that help me when I am in those moments with other people? Okay, so. Let me introduce you to the Mindset for Growth program. So just like many other businesses, uh, we experienced a massive shift uh, last March. So, you know, we're a people organizational development program. So therefore we spend our time in meeting rooms or, or in um, uh, seminar rooms, working with groups of people or one-to-one. -one. That's, that's what our business was. Uh, and then COVID hit and all of that stopped. So what are we going to do? Um, so we have taken our core materials and we have made those workshops that we would have run face to face and adapted them to digital formula. So therefore now we can support people with materials that you can self-study online on your own. Um, and we've done them at a really affordable price to support uh, all businesses and all people. So let me introduce you to the Mindset for Growth program. This is a little bit of um, a little bit of feedback that we've had. Uh, basically, it's roughly about six hours worth of learning um, over four small modules, and it's all self-managed, uh, and it's having a great impact. It is what would have been our core introductory one-day program, translated into an online learning module. And because of this webinar today, and because of the support of GradForce. 
and the Chamber of Commerce, you are getting access to this material um, at a reduced rate. So here's what it does for you. It's for, fully virtual, it's a flexible solution. Uh, you can read it, you can do it through your phone, you can do it online. Um, we've developed an online platform, so it's completely private. You get your own access to our learning platform called Growth Space, and you can go in and out of the material as many times as you want to. All the tools that you've seen today are in there, including all the videos. So you can practice, 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 grow, grow, grow. Um, remind yourself. There's another mentor that I listen to who has a wonderful phrase, which is mental rehearsal. And mental rehearsal is that, you know, repetition, repetition, repetition. Um, so that's the Mindset to Growth program. I'm, I know I'm slightly ahead of time. Um, and you'll see at the bottom of the screen here that you, um, you get a, a slightly reduced rate um, because of today. That's it there on the screen, on, um, on a tablet. So it shows you the type of easy to use material that it is. Um, and so it's uh, 140 plus that. And if you wanted to get in touch with that, you can do that. The last screen I'm gonna put up has got some information about where you can access that. So before we go, another practice that we have. So this is a tool called Feel As You Go. Um, you may or may not be a fan of fast food, but one of the companies that um, one of our team worked with very early when they were at university was McDonald's. And McDonald's have a practice called Clean As You Go. So it's about hygiene. It's about cleaning up as you go. All of us know that in our own kitchens, you know, we wipe down and we clean as we go, otherwise you end up with clutter everywhere. So our feel as you go process has exactly the same intention. It's about learning to feel as I go. So using the practices to get curious about how I'm feeling, curious about my intention, noticing by being present what the feelings are, and it's to help us to develop the habit of practicing that throughout the day. Now, sometimes I'll use my phone. If I'm in a particular busy period and I know that I have a habit of rushing because I've got to keep going, got to keep going, sometimes I'll put alarms on my phone and just remind myself to check in with the wheel or take a break, you know, to pause and go outside. So using the technology to help me rather than the technology driving me. So let me just give you an opportunity to practice our feel as you go process. So we've shared quite a bit of material. You've seen some tools, you've seen some materials that you're gonna receive in a PDF. You've watched a couple of videos and we've paused some poignant reflective thoughts with you. So using the wheel and using the chat box, get curious and just look at the wheel in terms of developing your vocabulary around your emotional state at this time and ask yourself, how do I feel right now? So let's see some of those emotions popping in in the chat box. content and happy. Optimistic.
Cool. Great, guys. So um, the final reflective question really for you. Um, we talk in emotional intelligence terms around being and doing. So how am I feeling? How am I being present? And what can I do? So back to choices. So my last sort of reflective question for you before we head off or before I head off is to say, so what's one thing you intend, so mindset, I intend to do for myself today? So let's see some commitment statements, just one word that allows you to make a decision, a choice right now to be more present or more choiceful or more mindful with yourself today. So a doing, what's one thing you will do today to practice your emotional intelligence? So thanks, Charlotte. Just think about what you're going to do in order to enable that. You don't have to put it in the box, but just poising that thought. What will I do? Yeah. Start to notice how I'm feeling more. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. Yeah. Be less reactive. Pay attention to my feelings. Yeah. Slowing down, pausing, watching how I'm reacting, watching how I'm feeling. Yeah. Being aware of what I'm going to eat. Yeah. Spending 10 minutes of quietness. They're all really practical things that you can do. Um, and the final thing for me is that a lot of this is about habit change. So my enticement to you would be either the thing that you've put in the chat box now or something similar to that one thing one little thing that you could do that you could practice every day at the same time like um you know shut out all the noises for 10 minutes i'm just going to go with andrew's option there how and when and um, am i going to do that and could i practice that for 30 days you know, 21 days. So I'm just going to leave you with that final thought. Yeah, go for a run. Uh, just check if I've got anything else that I need to share with you. Um, I'll pause for a moment just to see if there are any questions. Um, you'll see while you're thinking if you need to that there is a um, a code there for you if you choose that you want to um, have a go at the virtual program. Uh, we use the virtual program sometimes to run team sessions or organizational sessions supported with a little bit of facilitation in between from us to help people change some habits and to look after themselves. So recharging, being mindful, taking good care of ourselves. just reading those final comments. All right, guys, it's an over and out for me. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for the interactions that you've given and I hope that the slide deck you're gonna receive will be of value to you. I wish you an amazing rest of day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. Um, I think I can speak on behalf of everyone uh, uh, how informative um, and reflective yeah. that information is. Um, and, and how we can use it to adapt both in our personal life and business life, which are, are very much uh, symbiotic, you know, at, at the moment, they have been kind of pulled together, um, which I guess is uh, something we're all having to adapt to. Yeah. So um, we're going to now go to Louise. Um, Louise is here from Gradforce, um, and without uh, the support of Louise um, with Gradforce, you know, we wouldn't be able to hold these sessions to you. So uh, really thankful for that. Um, you know, something to help us all grow and develop. So we're going to hear from Louise. If you have, if you, um, I don't know who of you on here uh, are, have asked for the Kickstart scheme, 
or have applied to the Kickstart Scheme. But the Kickstart Scheme is a government initiative. Um, it's to try and facilitate young people into employment, um, of course, with the current situation we are in. Um, it's a really good government initiative. Um, and part of that is that uh, businesses are being asked to provide a form of, um, uh, a form of, <laughs> sorry, my phone just binged and it's put me off, um, <laughs> a form of training. So yeah, I, I, Louise will touch on this a bit more with you. Um, so yeah, over to you, Louise. Okay, th thank you very much for attending today. Um, just, you know, GradForce is set up to work with employers and students, and we would like you to sort of learn a little bit more about how we're preparing our students um, for the workplace and the series of webinars that we are ho hosting over the next few months uh, actually relate to the students and their training that they're getting as well. So they get mindset practice training as well as you know what we're putting on and some of the other content is about uh, some of the barriers that, that we have spoken to employers about um, you know employing people from underrepresented groups or disability or mental health um, and so our sort of whole program has a theme in in helping break down those barriers and finding the solutions for you and working with you to enable you to um, employ the right people for your workplace our, our, our services bespoke um, so please you know contact us and we can work together with you in solving your employer employee solutions but also just work in partnership with us um, as you know a county-wide initiative we can work with the kickstart program um, but we can also work you know in a bespoke um, way to enable you to get the right person for your workplace and also I encourage you to attend our webinar series because I think as a, ben as a business you will really get a lot from it. We've got our internal um, people, Charlotte who's there here today will be delivering one, I'll be delivering one, we've got some academics delivering some, some webinars throughout the series as well so thank you very much for attending today please contact us for any follow-up information about the programme. Um, myself and Katie would be more than willing to have further conversations with you about what your needs are as an employer, um, whether it's around recruitment or whether it's around training. We're more than happy to talk to you about that. So thank you so much for coming. And please sign up for the rest of the webinars. You'll get a lot out of it because we certainly have on the ones that we've done. So thank you. Thank you so much, Louise. And um, just before we finish, does anyone else have any questions or do they need any information? Um, I, I, you know, I'll be very surprised if they do, actually. It's been a very, very good session. Uh, my mind is full, full of reflective thinking. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Please do sign up to the next, uh, the next session, um, which you can find on our events page. Uh, on the via the Kent and Victor Chamber website. So yeah, please do come to these. Uh, they're very, I'm, I'm very grateful that we're just able to put these on. So thank you thank everyone for a lovely day and uh, I look forward to seeing you all soon.